a lot of the time in this class, we're going to have to combine different functions together to make it more complicated. Okay, the three ways you can combine functions are to add them, you know, or subtract them, multiply, or technically divide them, or what's called a composition of functions. Composing functions together. Okay, let's start with the simplest one, which is addition. So a typical situation this might come up, maybe you have two bacteria on the same, uh, two types of bacteria on the same. And so maybe you have a blue bacteria that's growing with this function f of t equals t squared plus one, which describes its population growth, right? And then the second population is uh, not growing, it's, it's actually dying out as the other one's kind of taking over. So that one follows g of t, equals five plus one over two. Okay, so this population two is dying out. Then you might ask, okay, what's the total population of any kind of bacteria over time? So to do that, you just take each individual value at a given time of first population, second population, add them together to get the total number of bacteria in the fish at that time. Do that for every single time and then add these two functions together and generate this. Okay, so the addition of a function, or you know, the function that is the addition of these two, so like f plus g, is given by just adding the values together at every point in f plus g. Okay, so for our, our example here, our function, total function, let's call it sum, t, which is f t, right? And that's just going to be t squared plus 1 plus our g of t, 5 over 1 plus 2. OK? So this is a new function, which is the sum of the other ones. I'll just rewrite that down here t squared plus 1 plus 5 over right? So this is your new function, sum of these. And it's just the first function plus the second. Very simple. Okay. The next type of combination would be to multiply two functions together. So this might happen in a scenario where maybe you know how the population is growing, right? And you took out like a representative bacteria and you measured its mass over time. Okay, and so how that guy was growing. So we have P is the number of uh, cells or bacteria in this dish, and that's growing over time. Like this function here, T squared over 4 plus 1, or 0.2 plus 1. And let's say that you measured the mass of one, and over time it was getting smaller. So there, there's, there's more cells, but they're each getting smaller. And you measured that the, the mass of your cell was, was decaying like 1 over 1 plus t, at this function here. Then you might ask, okay, if I know these two things separately, okay, what is the total mass of all the bacteria in my petri dish over time? That would be the multiplication of the number of them times the mass of each one. Okay, so that'd be n equals p of t times mu of t. Okay? So for this example, that would be our t squared over 4.2 plus 1. And so this function here times our mu of t, 1 over 1 plus t. Okay, so you multiply these two functions out, you can simplify it, and that would give you an expression for total mass. And so basically what you're doing is at every point in time, you are taking, let's say, this value, multiplying it with the corresponding value there of the other function, and that generates, you know, whatever value this is. Okay, so you just multiply each value together at each point in time, get the new function value. Okay, and so that gives us the rule that you can multiply functions together. So f uh, times x times g is just f of x, g of x. 
take as much time as you want. Okay. And the last type of combination is a composition, where let's say um, in these kind of experimental setups that I was describing, where we are measuring, the, you know, we're counting up the number of cells and features, you're not actually going to be counting them by hand, you're going to be measuring what's called the optical density of that petri dish. So uh, the more bacteria that are on there, the less light is going to go through that dish, and we can use that to estimate how many um, bacteria you have on the dish. Okay, and so, you know, let's say you had a population, let's call it N this time, uh, just because P's look like rows. You have N describes the number of cells in your petri dish, and that's growing with time, according to that equation we had before. And the optical density, the amount of light you let through that petri dish, depends on the number of cells in the petri dish. And they'd be measured this separately in a different experiment. And so you, you know that the optical density is a function of the number of cells. Rho then is n over 2 plus 2n plus 5. This is your function that relates the density, you know, the amount of light you're letting through this petri dish as a function of the number of cells. So then when you're doing this experiment, what you're actually going to be measuring is this optical density over time. And then you'll use that to back out the number of cells in your dish. Okay? And so this is a composition of function, right? This is the density depends on the number of cells, and the number of cells depends on time. So the way that the density depends on time would be rho of t, right? But that's rho of n of t, right? So this composition, because we know rho of n and we know n of t, if we know n of t and then we compose rho with that, we get rho of t. Okay? And so what this comes out to is we apply this rho function, right, this density of the function of n to our function n of t. We apply that to t squared over 4.21, right? And then we use our expression rho of n, now that this is in this form, that gives us uh, squared over 4.2 plus 1. And then in red will be kind of the, the things that are coming from the row equation over, okay, so this n over 2 plus 5, we substitute in this expression n, so then that would be over 2, and then here's our n again, so t squared 1 plus So we go like the intermediate step is n of t to n of t plus 5. Okay, and then we're substituting in this blue expression wherever we have n of t. And that gives us this final expression, rho as just a function of t. Okay? The way composition works is something like this. We started with our independent variable, let's say x, so in, in our case it was time, and we applied the function n to it, okay, the number of cells over time, and then we applied our density function, rho, to that, we got rho of n, right, and that gave us rho of n, right, and this gave us rho of t, composition of rho function and the n function gives us rho of t. Right, so we call this one the inner function, this one the outer function. Okay, and so we write the composition several ways. We can write it as rho of n or rho of n. Okay, and it gives you a function of just time. Okay, at the end of the day.